In this video, you'll learn all about tetracycline, its mechanism of action, possible side effects, and what you as the nurse will be assessing for. Pharmacology can be challenging to learn in nursing school, right? So we're going to break it down super simple for you, step by step, so that you can finally understand it. But don't worry, friend, you don't need to figure everything out alone anymore for nursing school. No, no, no. We are here to help you every step of the way. And if you need more help with learning pharmacology in nursing school, be sure to download this free pharmacology cheat sheet that I have for you that walks you through how to learn pharmacology step by step. You don't need to worry about it. I will walk you through. Now, the link is down below in the description for you to check out all the details. Now, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell, and I'm going to pass you on over to our lead nurse, Nicole. She'll walk you through tetracycline. So tetracycline is the generic name, and the trade names are going to be doxycycline and vibromycin. The pharmacologic class is tetracyclines, and the therapeutic class is anti-infective. Now tetracycline can be used to treat infections that affect the respiratory system, skin infections, eye infections, lymphatic infections, genital urinary infections, and tick-borne illnesses. So that's what it's indicated to be used with. Now the mechanism of action of tetracycline is that it inhibits bacterial protein synthesis in susceptible bacteria. It works specifically against gram-positive bacteria, which includes MRSA or MRSA, and gram-negative pathogens. Now its therapeutic effect is going to be it kills the bacteria and it also inhibits further bacterial growth. Now some side effects that can occur with tetracycline, a super common one is dizziness because it does affect the vestibular nerve in your ear. This um, can cause some just unsteadiness, some overall feeling of dizziness. GI upset is also super common because even though it's disrupting the bad bacteria, it's super hard to only affect that bad bacteria. So the good bacteria, the kind that lives in your GI tract, gets disturbed too. This results in GI upset. Now, if too much of the good bacteria is destroyed in the GI system, it can lead to Clostrum difficile or C. diff, which is a very profuse, foul-smelling, bloody diarrhea, which can happen for up to two months afterwards. It's also super important to monitor the skin. It can cause some skin irritation, which can develop into Stevens-Johnson syndrome. You also are going to want your patient to wear sunblock and just try to stay out of the sun. It can cause some photosensitivity. Now for your nursing assessment, it is super, super important to take any cultures from the blood or the wound before starting the first dose of antibiotics. You don't need to get the results back before starting this treatment. You just need to collect the sample first and then get the treatment started as soon as possible. You're going to want to monitor continuously for any worsening signs of infection. You want to look for any changes in vital signs, any increase in fever, increase in white blood cell count, or any symptoms that are worsening and the patient's heading in the wrong direction rather than where we want them to go. You're going to also want to monitor their bowel pattern. Watch for any fevers associated with profuse foul-smelling bloody diarrhea, which could indicate Clostrum difficile or C. diff like we talked about earlier. You're also going to want to monitor the liver and renal function labs and monitor the CBC for long-term therapy. Tetracycline is contraindicated with the second or third trimester of pregnancy. Um, it can harm the fetus, so it's, don't use it in the second or third trimester of pregnancy. You're going to want to avoid any long-term treatment or any treatment over 21 days. Um, especially in pediatric patients, it can stain their teeth. So, I mean, it's kind of a trade-off at that point, but just know that any long-term treatment, especially in pediatric patient, patients, it can stain their teeth. You're going to want to use caution when your patient has impaired liver and renal function. It is metabolized in the liver and then excreted in the kidneys, so we don't want to add any extra stress to them. For patient education, super important to make sure your patient takes it exactly as prescribed. They don't, you don't want them to miss a dose and you want to take, 
them to take the entire prescribed course. They are going to start to feel better, but we need to finish up that entire course so that we can make sure we get rid of all that bad bacteria. You're going to want to instruct your patient to monitor their bowel pattern and contact their healthcare provider if they have any fever associated with profuse or foul smelling bloody diarrhea, which could indicate, like we said before, Clostrum difficile or C. diff. You want to encourage them to have adequate hydration to prevent acute kidney injuries, use sunscreen, and photo because photosensitivity can happen. You also don't want them to drink any alcohol because this can all reduce the effectiveness of the medication and it can increase the risk of hepatitis. Don't take any antacids or dairy products with this medication. It's going to affect how it's absorbed and we don't want any of that. If the patient's on any oral hormonal birth control, another form of birth control should be used because this affects the absorption of that as well. Now, as for nursing considerations, it's super important to take any cultures before you start the medication. Like we said before, you don't have to wait to get the results back. You just do need to take the cultures before you start it. And also super important, make sure your patients take the entire prescribed course even when they're feeling better, make sure we get rid of all that bad bacteria. Now, if you want to deep dive into all of the other medications besides tetracycline, you need to learn in nursing school. Do not miss the medication database that we have for you inside the Nursing SOS membership community. And remember, there's three ways that I can help you more through nursing school. Number one, download that free cheat sheet that walks you through the step-by-step -step process for learning medications and pharmacology and nursing school. Don't miss out on that. And of course, be sure to check out our nursing school boxes that we have available for you. They are packed with resources to help you succeed in nursing school. And the pharmacology is box is full of resources to help you pass farm. And of course, if you want me to hold your hand throughout your nursing school journey, please do not miss out on joining the Nursing SOS membership community. It's filled with step-by-step -step nursing lectures to help you understand everything you need to know for nursing school faster, so you'll be more prepared for your exams. There's also a full medications database inside the Nursing SOS membership community for you as well. The links to all of those things are in the description down below. And if you liked this video, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment below to let me know that you loved it and share it with your nursing school friends. And of course, click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And click on one of these videos right over here so you can keep rocking nursing school. And my friend, as always, Ways. Go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.